Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving another geometry puzzle. Two circles with radii 2 and 3 are inscribed in a semicircle with radius r as shown above. Find r. So go ahead and try this problem yourself first before you see the solution. Okay, let's get started. So we do have a semicircle and then two circles are inscribed in it. So as usual, we're going to be making some connections here. Let's go ahead and connect the centers of the circles first. So that's going to give us something like this. And then we're going to drop the perpendiculars. One this way. Okay. Another one this way. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect the centers of the circles with the semicircle. So let's go ahead and do that as well because that'll be helpful when we set up our equations. Okay, so we're gonna make a connection like this and like this. And as you know, these are very important connections. Okay, so what do we know? We know that the radius of the semicircle is R, big R, okay? And the others are given as two and three. So this is two. That's a 2, that's a 2, that's a 3, that's a 3, and this is a 3 as well. Not this one, but the, the one that's perpendicular. So we have two right triangles here, obviously, and we're going to take advantage of that. So we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. As you know, with uh, most of these problems, maybe all of them use it at some point. Uh, and we just need to set it up. Okay? All right, let's see what happens. So I'm going to call this length A here, and then let's call this length B. And now what's, uh, what's interesting here is that uh, we kind of get a trapezoid here. You see the trapezoid? So I'm going to, um, I know the basis of the trapezoid. I just got to find the height of it. So to find the height, I'm just going to go ahead and draw a parallel to the base. Well, it's not the base of the trapezoid, but it's just the base of this shape here. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't work. Sometimes it acts up. Okay, here we go. So we did get another right triangle here, which is interesting, right? Okay. Well, what do we know? The radius of the larger circle is 3, so this is 1 and this is 2. So now we do get uh, a right triangle whose hypotenuse we know, and we know one of the legs. So let's go ahead and do this. A plus B, right, is equal to this whole length. Let's go ahead and square that. A plus B squared is equal to, well, I could probably just use the Pythagorean theorem directly first. So A plus B squared plus 1 squared is equal to, what's the hypotenuse? 3 plus 2, right? So that's going to be 5, 5 squared. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate A plus B squared here. If I do that, A plus B squared is going to equal 25 minus 1, which is equal to 24. And if I square root both sides, then I'm going to be getting a plus b as the square root of 24, which is equal to 2 root 6. As you know, 24 can be factored into 4 and 6, then we can take the square roots. Okay, what else do we know? Well, we did get two more right triangles here. If you go ahead and shade them, maybe use a different color. How about green? I'm going to shade this one green, and I'm going to shade the other one blue. Okay, so we're basically going to be using these two right triangles as well. So let's go ahead and uh, see how that works in our calculations. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write the Pythagorean theorem. But what is this length here? I know that this is 3, right? So I know that this length is 3 and the whole thing is R. So the hypotenuse of this triangle here is actually going to be, and I will probably just use a different color there. This hypotenuse here is just going to be r minus 3, right? Because the whole thing is r. And the hypotenuse of this other right triangle is going to be r minus 2. Okay? So we have two right triangles whose hypotenuses are given as r minus 3 and r minus 2. So I can just go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem on those triangles and let's see what happens from there. So the first one gives me a squared plus, and as you know, this height is 3. 
3 squared, that's equal to r minus 3 squared, All right? Okay, now what we can do from here is basically we can solve for r, I mean a. a is going to equal r minus 3 squared minus 9. If I go ahead and expand it, I'm sorry, that's r square, a squared. Uh, this is going to be r squared minus 6r plus 9 minus 9. 9 cancels out. Then we end up with a squared is equal to square r squared minus 6r. If you square root both sides, then a becomes the square root of r squared minus 6r. Okay? That's one of the equations we're going to use. And then in the other right triangle, which is blue, we're going to have a different equation. It's going to look like b squared. Let's write it down here. Plus r, okay, 2 squared, not r. Let's go ahead and erase that b squared minus 2 squared is going to equal r minus 2 quantity squared, okay, by using the blue right triangle here. Let's go ahead and expand this more. So that's going to look like b squared plus 4 is equal to r squared minus 4r plus 4. The 4 cancels out. Again, we get the b by itself. If we square root both sides, we're going to be getting b equal to the square root of r squared minus 4r. Okay, so I was able to get a and b in terms of r. And how does that help? Well, we do know that a plus b is equal to 2 square root of 6. If you remember from the red right triangle, we were able to calculate the height of the trapezoid, which is given as 2 root 6. So we can just go ahead and write another equation that involves r as a variable. And that's going to look like the square root of r squared minus 6r plus the square root of r squared minus 4r being equal to 2 root 6. Okay, so this is our equation. We need to solve it. But notice that is that going to be a quadratic equation? We have to do it, but looks like it's not going to be quadratic because we have the square root of r squared. When we square both sides, we're going to run into some quartic terms and cubic terms as well. Okay, now one of the ways you can handle this is, you can just go ahead and uh, square root both sides, I mean square both sides, and that's gonna give you some radicals, and then you, you can just go from there, or uh, you can just go ahead and factor out the r, and then square both sides. Either way, you're gonna be getting the same thing. So let's go ahead and square both sides, okay? So I'm gonna just go ahead and square both sides here, and here okay let's see what happens okay when i square a plus b as you know it's we're going to be getting a squared plus 2ab plus b squared so that's going to be r squared minus 6r plus 2ab is going to be two times the quantity r squared minus 6r multiplied by r squared minus 4r i put 6r again it should be 4r, okay? And then plus b squared, which is r squared minus 4r. And this 2 root 6 squared is 24 because we know that the square root of 24 is 2 root 6. Or you can think of it as 4 times 6. Okay, awesome. Let's go ahead and simplify this as much as we can. And we're going to be getting 2r squared minus 10r plus 2 times the quantity. That quantity, we can just go ahead and distribute it. That's going to give me r to the 4th minus 4r cubed minus 6r cubed plus 24r squared. Don't worry, at the end, it's going to be nicer. Right now, it looks scary. And that is going to equal 24. Now, we were able to square this and we still got a radical. We need to take care of that. One of the things I can do is I can go ahead and divide both sides by 2 here. It's just going to make our numbers a little smaller and easier to handle, hopefully. Then I have a gigantic expression here, but one of the things I can do is I can actually simplify under the radical, right? I do have a like term, so that's going to give me 10r cubed with a minus sign plus 24r squared. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, we can factor out an r squared, but that's not super important at this point because I'm going to do it differently, okay? So, we got this expression. Yes, it looks gigantic. It looks scary. There's a quartic term, and we're going to square both sides. So, 
it's gonna be crazy, right? But let's see what happens. So make sure you, you watch till the end to see what happens because it's gonna be interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and isolate the radical here, r to the fourth minus 10 r cubed plus 24 r squared. And that's gonna equal 24 minus r squared plus five r. So I'm putting everything else on the right hand side so that I have the radical isolated. The, the good thing about having the right radical isolated is I can square both sides again, right? And I can eliminate the radical because I, you need to get rid of the square root, okay? That's what we have to do here. So let's go ahead and do that. And if we do it, we're gonna get a lot of terms, of course, from the right-hand side. r to the fourth minus 10 r cubed plus 24 r squared equals. Now, how do you square a plus b plus c? As you know, there's a formula, a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus two times the quantity ab plus ac plus bc. So I'm gonna use that formula. 24 squared is 576. Actually, I forgot to do something here. Let's go back and fix it. I just noticed that when we divided everything by two, we forgot to divide the 24 as that. So that should be a 12, okay? And then, so that's gonna be 12 minus. So let's go ahead and fix that here as well so we don't get it wrong. Okay, here we go. Now, we should be good. So now I divided everything by two, it should be good. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and square the right-hand side. So that would give me, of course, a simpler number. So that's gonna be 144. I'm gonna square ABC first. If you square R squared, uh, it's gonna be R to the fourth, and then I'll get 25 R squared, right? And then what are we gonna get from here? Well, we're just gonna multiply more terms, and that's gonna be plus two times, okay, that's gonna give me minus 24 R squared, and then minus plus, it's gonna be a plus sign, right? First and second, first and third, plus uh, 120r and then minus 10r cubed. Okay, awesome. Well, that's kind of interesting because I have a negative 24r squared and a 25r squared. When I subtract them, I just get one r squared, which is cool. So let's go ahead and simplify this more. r to the fourth minus 10r cubed plus 24r squared. And that's gonna equal, uh, 144 is the only constant, right? And I have the r to the fourth. These two is gonna make r squared plus 120r minus 10r cubed. Yes, this looks like a quartic equation, but actually it's not because r to the fourth cancels out, minus 10r cubed also cancels out. So it's nice, we get a quadratic from here. If you subtract r squared, then you get 23r squared minus Okay, so I subtracted this from here. Minus 120r minus 144 is equal to zero. So we're gonna go ahead and solve this quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula, but don't worry, we're gonna take advantage of some algebra here. Okay, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared. I'm gonna write it as 120 squared minus 4ac, so we're get, we'll get a plus sign four times 23 times 144. All divided by 2a, which is 46. Okay, let's see how we can simplify this. Obviously 120 squared is divisible by 12 squared. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna pull out a 12 here, but let me write it as 12 squared first. Then we'll have inside the parentheses, we're gonna have 10 squared, and this is 12 squared, so I pulled it out. So what I have inside is four times 23, which is equal to 92. Okay, cool. Now it's easier to handle. Now 100 plus 92 is 192, and 192 is actually factorable 64 times three. And 64 is a perfect square, so I can easily take it out. So let's go ahead and do that. The square root of 12 squared is 12. The square root of 64 is eight. So all I have inside the radical is root three, which is nice because this is very easy to solve. Okay, awesome. So 12 times eight is 96, and we can divide everything by two, and that's gonna give us 60, plus minus 48 root three divided by 23. So this gives me two solutions. If I go ahead and split them up, R1 is gonna be 60 plus 48 root three divided by 23, 
and R2 is going to be 60 minus 48 root 3 all over 23. Now, here's the million dollar question. Which one is a valid solution? Can both of them be solutions? No. Here's the thing. Let's go ahead and estimate this number, okay? 48 root 3. Root 3 is about 1.7. Round it down to 1.5, okay? 48 is close to 50. Round it up to 50. 50 times 1.5 is 75. 75 plus 60 is 125. 125 divided by 25 is about 5-ish. So R1 is close to 5. It's about 5. We don't need to be super close. The other number is definitely going to be smaller. And if you remember, it was kind of like 60 plus 75. Actually, that's 135, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's close to 5 or 6 anyways. And this one is going to be like 60 minus 65, 75. Wow, that's going to be negative. Is that right? Okay, let's take a look. Well, let's go ahead and check the original picture, right? I mean, can it have a negative solution? No way. So R, can R be like 5-ish? Okay, let's go ahead and look at the original picture. If you remember, guys, the radius of the larger circle was 3. So this is about, well, it's greater than 3 for sure, right? So it's going to be close to 6. That makes sense. So we're going to go with the larger solution. So that's going to be our valid solution. And this will be the radius we're looking for. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, write something. Let me know what you think and see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.